Okay, so I want to recap, before I get to 5.7, I want to recap uh, 5.6 from yesterday. So yesterday was the sign law. Okay, so sign law had two specific requirements, or had to meet one or the other. And they would tell me without looking at their notes what one of the two was. Requirements for sign law. Yeah? Two sides. Sorry? Two sides. two sides and? A corresponding angle, okay? So the first one is two sides and a corresponding angle. What I mean by a corresponding angle, it is a side, sorry, it's an angle that has its side, like the width that's with it. So if we had an angle, say 60 degrees, then we would have the side across from it, okay? So that would be the corresponding angle and side. Okay, what was the second one? What was the second one? So two sides and a corresponding angle, or, or, uh, Emmerich, good. So uh, two angles and one side. Okay, it doesn't have to be a corresponding side for that one. One second. So the second one doesn't have to be a corresponding, corresponding side to start. Okay, so it's two angles, sorry, two sides, one corresponding angle, or two angles and one side. Because eventually one of them will be corresponding, because if, if it's not the first two angles, then you're able to find the third one. Okay? It is important to know which is which because that will determine which formula you use. Okay, so sign law has two different requirements, or sorry, one of the two requirements, and this one has two different ones. Okay? So we have cosine law here, okay? So they has, it's, you can use this if one or two things occur. The measures of the two sides and the contained angle. So what that means, so I'll just draw one here. So say I had, uh, I don't know, say this was four, this was six, and this was 30 degrees, okay? This would be the contained angle. Okay, so the angle is in between the two sides. So it's two sides and a non-corresponding angle. So it's a non-corresponding angle. Okay, they call it contained. Some teachers call it uh, like a Pac-Man, where it's like, if you think about it here, it's eating the angle, kind of the two sides. Um, so the angle is in between the two sides. Okay, so it's not a corresponding angle. So if we don't have a corresponding angle, automatically it goes to cosine law. Okay, or the second one is three sides. Three sides and no angle. Okay. So again, sign law, and you're going to have to know this if you had to put this on a test to explain which one you would use and when. Okay, so sign law, two sides and a corresponding angle, or two angles and a side. And now sign law, two sides and a non-corresponding angle, or three sides. Okay, so you have to know which... And on a test, you're gonna to have to look at the triangle that you have and you have to determine which formula you're gonna use. Okay, then there's two formulas. It's, a, it's actually the same formula. Same formula, it's just, if you rearrange this one, if you rearrange it, you could get this, okay? So if you bring over your B, bring over your C, and then divide by the negative two BC cos, sorry, the negative two BC, you get this, okay? I know that the signs are a little bit different because we take out the negative, but if you isolate for cos A, you'll get this part here. So we use this one when we're finding a side, finding the third side, and this one is when we're finding an angle.
Okay, so this one finding the third side, and this one here, you're finding an angle. And it could be any angle. Okay, so a key point here, it's not difficult. This is not difficult. You're li literally just plugging in numbers and it shoots out the answer, right? But you have to be careful. So this side here corresponds to this angle. Okay, so whatever angle this is, the side you're looking for is here in the formula. Okay, so these have to correspond to each other. Okay, the angle A and the A here. Likewise, in the form, this one formula, this angle has to correspond with this side. And I'll show you with an example. Okay, so if I'm looking for side A, angle A has to be here. So if I'm looking for side A, we have to, angle A has to be here. Likewise, if I'm looking for angle A, if I'm looking for angle A, side A has to go last. So if you just think about it, the angle side, they're last in both, in both equations. Okay, so it doesn't have to be A, it could be B, it could be M, it could be Z. Okay, so these are just standard letters. So these two have to be corresponding and these have to correspond to each other. And the B and C doesn't matter what order it's in, it's just the other two sides. Okay, so B and C, you could flip them, doesn't matter. Same here, it doesn't matter. Questions? Good. Okay, that's good. This is just two examples. Okay, in, sorry, all my formatting is off, even for the, the next lesson. The triangle is supposed to be here. So in triangle DEF, D is 97.4, E is 3.9 meters, and angle F, sorry, side F is 2.5. Find D to the nearest tenth, okay? This one doesn't say solve the triangle, so we only have to solve for the one side. If it says solve the triangle, what does that mean? You have to solve for all the angles. Yeah, you have, to, you have to solve for all the angles and all the sides. Okay, so let's draw this out. Let's make it obtuse angle here. So it doesn't matter what your triangle looks like. Okay, but since I have an obtuse angle, I'll make an obtuse one. So this one is 97, sorry, D, E, F. So D, 97.4 degrees. Okay, then it says E is 3.9. Does that represent the angle or side? Side. The side, because? This um, is a lowercase. Lowercase, good. So E is 3.9, lowercase, and where would that fit on the triangle? Could I kindly ask that all graduating students, Alpha A to D, please make your way to the cafeteria to pick up your cap and gown. Thank you. Okay, so where would E be? Or side E, Isabella? Between E, or sorry, D and F. Good, so at the bottom between D and F, because that's across from our angle. So this is 3.9 meters. Okay, and lastly, F is 2.5 meters. It just gives it away even with the, with the units. So it's meters, so it has to be a side. Okay, so where will be F side F and B? Side F, left or right? Left or right? Yeah, to the left. Okay, so side F is here, so 2.5. Okay, so it says find side D, so we're looking for this side here. Okay, so we're finding a side, so we are using this formula here. A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos 
So I'm gonna, I'm gonna change the letters, sorry. Actually, I'll do that too. Okay, I'll just write this, and then I'll, I'm gonna substitute the letters in. So I'm looking for side D. So that means this has to be a D, and that means this has to be the angle D. Okay, so this has to be D and D. So I'm gonna change the letters. So this would be D, and this will be D as well. Okay, since we're looking for side D, the angle D has to go at the end. And then we have E squared plus F squared minus 2EF. So again, since we're looking for a side, we use the first formula, okay? Since we're looking at side D, so that means we have to use angle D, which makes sense, it's the only one we have. Okay, now let's start substituting. So E is 3.9 squared, F is 2.5 squared. Oh, I'm right in the glare, aren't I? Yeah, sorry guys. I don't know why I erased it. Thanks, Marco. Okay, now we're substituting values in, so we're looking for D squared. E is 3.9, F is 2.5, Minus 2 times 3.9 times 2.5 cos of So I'm going to go through the two common mistakes that students make when doing this formula, and it has to do with this negative here. So I'll start punching it in. So when you do the cos formula for the side, what I would do is do this part together. So do the first part of the equation together, so the squares, and then I would do this part together. So since, since this is all multiplication, okay? Do not plug the negative into the calculator. You can if you want to, but just be careful. So what I would do is just leave the, the negative. So figure out what the squares are, add them together. And then the second part, multiply all of this together. So 2 times 2.9 times 2.5 times post 97.4. Because sometimes you get a double negative. So you just have to be careful. So 3.9 squared plus 2.5 squared gives me 21.46 subtract. So I get here a negative 2.51. Did you guys get that? Okay. So the reason why I want you to be careful is because of this situation here. So we have a negative negative. If you would have plugged in the negative to you, you would have got positive, but some students just carried down the negative. So just be careful. Okay, so what's the subtract a negative? What happens here? What happens? What happens here? You add them, thank you, Isabella. Okay, so it becomes adding. So 21.46 plus 2.51 gives me 23.97.
Am I finished? Leah? No? What do I have to do now? Square root, okay? So the first big mistake is students messed up these signs here. The second biggest mistake is they forget the square root at the end. Okay, so just remember, it's easy to not forget, carry down the d squares. Okay, so the very last step is to now square root. Okay, and it would make sense. If you looked at the, if you look at the triangle, like this is two and a half, this is three and nine, and then all of a sudden you would have 23. It, you know, it doesn't really fit what the triangle looks like. Okay, I would expect something around uh, like, I don't know, five or six could be bigger than this, but not astronomically larger, okay? Actually, it'll be four point something. So we're gonna square root, and we get 4.89, what's it tell the nearest 10th? So 4.9, 4.9 meters. And that's it. Okay, we're just substituting values into the equation. It's not very difficult. Just make sure you do the correct operations and follow all the steps. Please excuse the interruption. I'm currently asked that all students um, graduating with the um, last name beginning with uh, E to L, please make your way to the cafeteria and pick up your cap account. Thank you. Any questions? Um, for the test, would we need like a video for students for questions? Not if it's a word problem. Uh, not for this one. This is fine. If you want to for this, yes. Uh, but you don't need to. It was more like a work problem than like it would be like the tree is so high, this angle is this, then yes. Okay. It wouldn't hurt if you did it here. I don't really necessarily consider this a work problem. You just have to draw the triangle. Okay, last one. Okay, so I forgot to mention that the triangle did fit the criteria for cosine law because the angle was in between the two sides. I forgot to mention, uh, I forget which one was it. This was like 3.7, 2.5, and the angle was here. Okay, so the angle was in between the two sides. Okay, so they did fit the criteria. Okay, so the angle was in between the two sides. Okay, next one, in triangle ABC, again, I don't know why I put the triangle here. In triangle ABC, A is such, B is such, and C is such, find the largest angle round to the nearest degree. Okay, what's given in the equation? What, what, what is it given? Three sides. Three sides, okay, so we have three sides, and if we have three sides, then it is cosine law. Okay, we don't have any angles. So let's just draw it out. It doesn't matter how you draw it. But 20 would be your largest side. I don't want to draw something like this. So 20.6. So that would be my B. So this would be A, B, and C. So A is 9.6. And C is 14.7. Whenever you draw a triangle, it doesn't have to be like to scale or anything like that. So the question asks, find the largest angle. Which one would be the largest angle? Oh, yeah? B, right? Okay. If I didn't draw it, like you can look at it and you can see, well, B is the largest, but what if I didn't draw it correctly? How would I know what the largest angle is? How would I know? Yeah, so the angle, the largest side, 
the corresponding angle is always the largest angle. So the largest angle belo belongs to the largest side, always. Obviously, because if the angle is larger, if it opens up more, it creates this side to be longer. Okay, so the largest angle um, corresponds to the largest side. Okay, so now that means we're looking for B. So we want to find this angle here. So we have cos B. Okay, I know in the regular formula it has it as an A, but remember we, we're looking for cos B. That means what two sides go first? What two sides are going to go here? And what goes last? A and C. A and C will go here, and then B will go last. Okay, so we have A squared plus C squared minus B squared all over, what is it, 2AC? 2AC two. Two this time, though. I haven't used this formula in a while. Okay, so now let's substitute. So A is 9.6 squared. C is 14.7 squared. Be careful here as well. The subtraction is not part of the actual number. So this is 20.6 squared. So no matter what you get for this answer, you're gonna be subtracting it. Okay, so don't do negative 20.6 squared. It's, the negative does not belong to the 20.6. It's a subtract whatever this answer is because it's not in brackets. All over 2, 9.6 times 14.7. Okay, I'm going to do this in two steps. I'll do the numerator and then do the denominator. Sir, the formula is 2BC, not 2AC. Yes, yeah, but it, um, it switches because we're looking for B, right? Oh, okay, sorry about that. So, so yeah, no worries. That's a good question. Glad you brought that up. So B and B is here and here. So whatever these two sides are, uh, the first two sides become the first, become the sides on the bottom. Because if we had another B in the denominator, that means we would have two, and then we wouldn't be able to solve for it. So since the first two sides here are A and C, that means the bottom has to be A and C as well. So I'm glad you pointed that out. I should have mentioned that in the formula at the beginning. So these two correspond, and then these two sides here belong to the two sides at the bottom. Squared minus Did you guys get a negative on the top, right? Yeah, like negative 116.11, good. And then you divide 2 times 9.6. A negative is fine. 282.24. Just gonna bring it over here. negative 116.11 divided by 282.24. Okay, so if I had this as my answer, would the negative 0.4114 make sense? No, right? We're supposed to be... Um, we're supposed to be finding an angle. This would be, would it make sense with regards to the angle? So what am I forgetting? Cos inverse. Yeah, so the cos inverse. So and whenever we're looking for an angle, you must do this the last step. Unless you're using the 180 minus the other two, you have to always do inverse. When you 
when finding an angle. So cos inverse. And I get 114, that's a large angle. Oh yeah, that makes sense. It's obtuse. So it says round to the nearest degree. So 114 degrees. Which makes sense if you looked at the triangle, kind of have an obtuse triangle here. If you drew it somewhat to scale. And that's it. I just want to double check the questions in the homework. Declan, how's my video still going? Yes. So page 325. Please excuse the interruption if I can kindly ask that all graduating students with the last names beginning from M to C, please make their way to the cafeteria to collect your cap and gown. Thank you. Yeah, pretty straightforward. Okay, so those are the five questions. One, two, five, six, seven. One and two has A and B. So, so it ends up being four, five, six, seven questions. Okay, so I'll give you to 945. So 45 minutes to work on this stuff. At the same time, uh, my battery is going to